What's more fun than writing? Fixing mistakes that other people made in their writing. Okay, maybe this isn't your cup of tea, but it'll need to be for what's brewing on the SAT. Hi, I'm Kyra, and in this lesson, I'll introduce you to the multiple choice questions in the SAT writing and language section. You'll be reading rough drafts of essays filled with mistakes. They'll look like this. Your job is to fix the mistakes and figure out the best way to express the essay's content. This section is designed to test your knowledge of grammar usage and mechanics and your skill with writing style and rhetoric, which means that's what the questions will be asking you about. You'll be reading rough drafts of essays with portions that are underlined and numbered. And as you can see, the questions are lined up in a column next to the passage or on the following page. Start by reading the passage. While you're reading, you'll come to numbers in gray boxes, like these. This is the sign that it's time for you to answer a question. Each number in a gray box, like this, corresponds with a question in the column next to the passage. Answer the corresponding question, then move back to the passage and keep reading until you come to the next number and question. Each question will have four answer choices. In this section, the questions are not arranged in order of difficulty. But as you develop your grammar skills and practice these questions, everything should get easier. A few more things you should know. Grammar and style are both important. Sometimes more than one answer choice will be grammatically correct, but the correct answer has to work within the context and style of the passage. It's important to remember that an answer choice containing a grammatical mistake is wrong, even if you like the style. Next, in some passages, like this one here, you'll see that some of the sentences are numbered. Likewise, in some passages, you'll see that the paragraphs are numbered. This is a sign that at least one of the questions will ask you to determine the best order of the paragraphs. Throughout this section, your answers will need to work within the context of the passage. Sometimes multiple answer choices will be grammatically correct, but only one will be grammatically correct and work within the context of the passage. The stronger your grammar, the easier the writing and language tests will be to you. And that's what this unit is for, to build those skills. Now, let's take a look at a couple of sample questions. Here's a short excerpt from a passage about baseball and cricket. In baseball, the batter attempts to hit the ball within a 90-degree quadrant. In cricket, the batter can hit the ball in any direction. The underlined portion, quadrant comma in, is the portion of the sentence that's rewritten in our answer choices. We know that this sentence needs a correction because, left as it is, it's a run-on sentence. So we want to start by going through the answer choices to find the best alternative. Answer choice A says, no change. Well, we can eliminate that because we've already identified that a correction to the run-on sentence is necessary. Okay, looking at answer choice B, quadrant, semicolon, but in, we know that this is incorrect because but is a conjunction that we cannot use with a semicolon. So, we want to eliminate answer choice B. Answer choice C, quadrant N, is missing all punctuation. It's a run-on sentence and it's wrong, so let's eliminate that one too. Answer choice D, quadrant, comma, but N, suggests that the only change necessary is adding but after the comma. This sentence then reads, in baseball, the batter attempts to hit the ball within a 90-degree quadrant but in cricket, the batter can hit the ball in any direction. This sentence is now grammatically correct. It uses punctuations and conjunctions correctly while keeping the structure of the sentence intact. Circle D and celebrate your home run. Read the sentence in the question silently to yourself. Trust your ear. If the sentence sounds off, it probably is. Now, let's go through a problem together and practice listening for a problem. Although the latest senatorial debate focused on the more controversial topics in the campaign, the candidates conducted themselves much more civil than they had previously. How does that sound to you? Does something seem off? 
the candidates conducted themselves much more civil, that seems a bit wrong. Let's try getting rid of the modifiers and unimportant details for a second to see how a simpler version of the sentence sounds. They conducted themselves civil. No, that's still wrong. Civil is an adjective, and this sentence is using it to describe a verb, conducted, and that doesn't work. We need to use an adverb to describe a verb. So, instead of civil, we need to use civilly. They conducted themselves civilly. That's starting to sound like something. Let's go back to our answer choices. We now know that civil doesn't work, so let's cross off choices A and D. So let's see which of our remaining choices sounds better when we plug them into the sentence. Choice B, the candidates conducted themselves much civilly than they had previously. Hmm, that still sounds a little weird. Answer choice B, much civilly, not only sounds wrong, it is grammatically incorrect. What about choice C? The candidates conducted themselves much more civilly than they had previously. Yes, that sounds good. Answer choice C is correct. Remember, trust your ear. Here's a pro tip. Don't be afraid of the no change choice. Sometimes it will be the correct answer. But as we have seen, sometimes it won't. So just be careful and don't automatically dismiss it. Also, remember to pay close attention to transitions and to whether the sentences are in the correct order. You aren't just being tested on grammar, you're being tested on writing as well. Make sure you practice a few of the hundreds of problems available throughout this course, and you'll be fixing essays like a pro in no time.